She stood leaning against the dirty sewer walls, pressing a small sack against her chest. She looked up as if trying to speak to God, and she wondered if he could hear her from this underground tunnel. The small-bodied bundle felt warm against her skin. They were making the journey in December, and it was just as cold as they expected. There were nights, however, when she would shake her daughter's fragile little body just to make sure she was still alive. Across the small space, she watched her husband tremble. He clenched his jaw tightly and held his hands by his side in fists. He stood in a large puddle of brown water in his socks. He kept his gaze lowered. Truthfully, he was embarrassed. He felt like a schoolboy, forced to stay in a corner and face the wall. And surely he looked like a schoolboy. Without his boots, his long socks revealed his feeble limbs and webbed toes. There were small light bulbs hanging from the ceilings of the tunnel, but it was too dark to have seen him approach them with a gun in hand. He demanded that her husband hand over his boots. Her husband was prideful and stubborn. This they shared in common. So naturally, he refused. The man kept pointing the gun straight to his head, and he wasn't flinching. He was serious. And of course, her husband stood her ground. He wasn't spectacularly built, nor was he trained in any special ability. In fact, he was a tall, slim man weighing about 180 pounds. Nothing about him was menacing. His wife's piercing scream echoed through the tunnel. Give it to him, she cried. His daughter, startled, had begun to cry, the first sign all night that she was still alive. He handed the boots over, and the bandit sprung across the puddle and skidded away. The gun was probably fake, he muttered. So now they stood in the dirty old sewer trying to make their way to America, the promised land of opportunity. Maybe she was holding on to a false illusion. After all, she'd heard the stories. Her sisters had come here only to end up as maids for some grouchy old ladies, but grouchy old ladies didn't care. They were undocumented and they paid in cash. As she stood in that tunnel, she began to rock her arms back and forth. The whole incident had startled her child, but she needed her to go back to sleep. She still had to finish the journey, and it sure as hell was not going to fail because of a crying baby. Her motherhood was really being tested. Her mission was to get this little sack across the border. No more delays, no more failed attempts, no more trips. Little did she know she'd be making the same journey when her little sack turned two. The coyote came back around to check on them. What the hell happened, he demanded. He was speaking, of course, about that dreadful scream. Her eyes shifted. Her scream had ricocheted off the wall and made her own ears ring. She hadn't even been afraid of that damn bandit. She was more afraid that her husband would have run off and gotten shot. He tended to run away from situations like he'd run away to his mother's house when she told him she was pregnant. She'd always managed to shake some sense into him. She'd stalk him outside of his mother's home, curse her off, and then force him to go back home and apologize. A scream during such a situation seemed like the right call. He'd feel obliged to surrender to the thief to calm his wife's nerves. The coyote took one look at her husband's feet and looked back up at her. We're almost there, he assured them. He appeared to be trying to convince himself. I'm going to go up and check if we're in the clear. He jumped onto a rope ladder. He pulled himself up as it swung underneath him. This was it. She could finally resume her life in New York. Sure, she was coming back across the border as a married woman and new mother, but she'd figure out that out as soon as she got to her cousin's apartment in the Bronx. She made herself a promise that she'd never come back to Mexico until it was time to care for her parents. Of course, at the time, she didn't know she'd be breaking that promise only two years later. But for now, she just wanted to be back in New York. But as she glanced down at the little sack in her arms and at her pouting husband standing in his soaking socks, she began to worry. Was she cut out to be a mother, a wife? Had she rushed into all of this in an attempt to escape her life in Mexico? As she thought this, the rope ladder began to swing again, and the coyote descended into the tunnel. We're clear. Hurry. His voice rang with urgency. There was no time to think. She handed the little sack to her husband and climbed anxiously up the ladder. As soon as she reached the top, the blinding sun shone down on her. She heard shuffling feet and static radios and felt two hands on each of her shoulders. Through squinting eyes, she recognized the words ice on the uniformed men. <laughs>